<clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, community update Q and A. Greetings this is the first descendant dev team. We recently received that our communication with the community has been lacking. We would like to apologize for this. Today we aim to address as many of the suggestions and feedback received from de descendants throughout the live service so far, which is about three months. Given the large volume and variety of suggestions, there may be some that we missed or haven't covered. However, starting today, we plan to communicate more regularly, sharing our thoughts and updates. We appreciate your patience and some suggestions remain unaddressed this time. Uh, for any devs who happen to be watching this video, I personally don't think you've been quiet and you've not been less in the communication. I think you guys are fine <laughs> personally, but I'm glad that you are trying to look out for people who said that. So <clears throat> the reason we're sharing these res um, responses through the announcement is that the volume and breadth of suggestions make it challenging to address them all within the limited time of broadcasting style format. Ah, I did ask to see if maybe there was a video format that they were going to do, but apparently that answers that question. There's so many questions they can't put into a video. Therefore, we've gathered a feedback for very uh, first to send communities and prepared responses that are candid and detailed as possible. Today's responses are organized under major themes, combat, content, equipment, customization. We'll share these suggestions and provide the team's thoughts and intentions in response since there's a lot of to cover. The document is quite long, but we hope you take time to read it through. And that's what we're going to be doing right now. Do this real quick. Okay, so now we're going to cover the first category, which is combat. And then we'll move on to content next. So combat, direction. Player suggestion is to create more content aligned with hack and slash and run gun styles, more monsters, faster pace, reduced travel time, distance, etc. Here's their response. We're developing further content to align with the hack and slash and run and gun styles. Specifically, we've taken feedback regarding the invasion content not fitting this approach. We're working on better matching these gameplay styles. Okay, so I think uh, the 400 invasions are sort of a step in the direction that people have been wanting. Okay. Uh, player suggestion, improve the invasion content. It does not fit the looter shooter genre and its hidden mechanics are stressful. I personally don't see an issue with it, but okay. We're currently focusing our development efforts on new content that's signed with the hack and slash and run and gun direction. So we don't have specific plans to revamp the invasions at this time. However, we are ex expanding our team. Let's go with all the news of layoffs and all that i'm glad that that they're actually expanding the team which is cool we'll continue to work on improving you underutilized or less popular contents along the development of new content that is really cool that they're expanding still that is really cool and player suggestion more boss patterns improvements invincible patterns or hidden mechanics yes i would agree that that'll be fun to vary up a little bit more so far, we've been implementing patches to replace the some bosses patterns with new ones. Really? Uh, new bosses will be added to the new content in season two, and we're preparing to introduce new monster types, introduce new monster types in the field in season three. Cool. So uh, there you go. Season three, we're going to have some new monster types. We'll work on diversity boss patterns. We'll ensure this aligns with the hack and slash and run and gun styles. Player suggestion is farming missions feel too long and tedious. We adjust to missions, durations, and pacing. We learn from feedback that our players enjoy missions with constant monster spawns and the freedom to roam while fighting. As a result, we've changed all missions in the hard infiltration operations to exterminate missions, no objective-based missions. We aim to create content with dense combat experience rather than fast-paced progression. This allows the hack and slash, run and gun type Gameplay will also be improving the existing field missions to repeat farming more enjoyable. Nice. Improve grapple hooks, cooldown reductions, out of combat cooldown reduction, etc. We believe the purpose of grapple hooks improvement is to enhance character mobility. All characters should be able to move with Bunny for a better co-op experience. Currently, Bunny offers arrives first and ends the event before other characters can catch up. Yes, I agree with that statement. 
To address this, we have considered improving the grapple hook or introduction of new default mobility skills or movement items to medium to long term. We're working to improve co-op play so players can run and fight together. Ooh, so grapple hook, new mobility skills. Mm, that's going to that's gonna be sound fun, but cool that they're looking into that. Uh, remove um, guided missile patterns and reduce the hit rates of common monsters. See, I don't have an issue with this and all that. So, but I guess people are definitely having it. Uh, the 1.1.6 update include a patch that reduces the performance of guided missiles, making it easier for players to dodge them. Yeah, uh, I personally not had any issues with it, but I guess other people did. Add an invincibility effect when rolling. We currently have no plans for this. There we go, chat. I think there was like a few weeks ago, someone was asking about invincibility frames, but there you go. We do not currently have no plans for this. Since guided missiles can now can be dodged, we believe that invincibility while rolling is less necessary. Rolling is designed to be a quick movement in direction of roll to allow players to evade enemy skills. Cool. So we're not going to be like a Dark Souls type <laughs> or mo uh, Monster Hunter World something. Uh, increase HP and MP recovery outside of combat. Currently, there's ample means to recover HP and MP during combat and builds are optimized accordingly. We re review whether further improvements are needed and provide updates in future dev notes. So yeah, in reactor bosses, when you do a reactor, uh, they've put HP and MP orbs drops when you kill them. So I don't understand why that is an issue, though. Okay. Make it easier to get ammo supplies, especially special rounds. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We're exploring ways to increase the utilization of special rounds. We'll implement improvements as soon as possible. Cool. Yeah, did um, think that special rounds were not getting quite a bit of love for there, but I'm glad they're looking into that. Improve equipment swapping during combat. There are some technical challenges associated with the suggestion. We have tried to prevent equipment or module swapping from becoming a part as a build. However, since players sometimes start with the wrong module setup, we'll see the need for adjustments. We plan to allow module changes on restarts after mission completions, but not during combat. Hey, look at that. So that means we don't have to go back to Albion, go back into a boss room. That's nice. I'm okay with that. Module changes on restarts after mission completions. Yes, please. That is going to be really nice for us. Remove collisions between party members or smoother environments. The game was designed with collisions between characters, skills, summons, and objectives. So there's many aspects to review. While we have reviewed this in the past and did not proceed with any changes at this time, we, but we plan on revisiting again. Hmm, okay. A little hint there. Uh, improved terrain features that interface, um, interfere with run and gun gameplays in the field. We are cons um, continuously refining the level designs to enhance its quality. Terrain adjustments are included in every update. But due to the abundance of objectives, some unaddressed terrain elements will still remain. We will continue to work on long-term level design improvements to ensure a smoother gameplay experience. Yeah, that just... This one is just a t overtime situation that will help and all that, so... Uh, allow shooting while running instead of walking when moving backwards for a better sense of speed. Interesting. We believe slowing down when moving backwards is appropriate for maintaining neutral movement. Moving quickly while retreating can make it harder to see, which may lead to discomfort. We keep it as it is, but we will can reconsider it as a significant player request. So no changes there, but if there's enough people complaining about this, they're going to address it. Okay. So here we go about uh, early growth. So next category, the early story difficult. Um, the the early story difficulty is too high, making progression challenging. So reducing difficulty is needed. See, I don't understand why people were struggling with this. Like, I don't get it. Why? Um. Yeah. In the one point one point six update, adjustments were lowered monsters levels and normal missions. We're adjusting difficulty and rewards for story selection to help. New players adapt more easily. We have continued to analyze and improve the difficulty and progression support in early games. Yeah, um, I get it. I'm not complaining that they reduced it, but I just don't understand why, though. Because I played through the story twice. One on my first time and second on the free-to-play account. And I didn't have any issues. So I'm not quite sure. 
Uh, content required initial learning should be more detailed and mandatory, i.e. module enhancement. Off offer rewards to uh, alleviate the stress of such mandatory tasks. Provide a support package to help with new player growth. We are preparing several support strategies in Season 2, We plan, which will be in December. We plan on rewarding players with enhanced modules as they progress through the story. We'll also reduce the farming difficulty for Enzo and Glade to allow players to have more descendants in the early stages. Ah! Okay, okay. And help them reach harder difficulties. Additionally, we've written choose better guides, help features, and clear difficulty indicators to support players in settings in early game. Yes, they've been I have been seeing improvements to that. So good job on you, devs. Uh player suggestions add a feature to disable party member effects. They already did that though. Uh, we understand that visibility can be an issue with multiple effects occurring simultaneously and there'll be optimized issues depending on the device. To address this, we agree that there was need to be a step-by-step -step feature to toggle effects on and off. However, simply toggling effects based on party members and off um, oneself makes it difficult to identify the boss from party members, so we believe grouping effects in one off control stage is necessary. Although it's not on the roadmap yet, we began discussing immediately due to ongoing optimization issues to some devices after the 400% dungeon update, which I am not surprised with. We have provide further details through dev notes once the plans are solid. Okay, interesting. I like how they're addressing this and explaining to us, not saying, hey, it's not possible. They're explaining why and giving us a little bit behind the scenes on it. This is really cool. I like this. Uh, improve the amplified buff UI as all buffs are small and green, making them hard to distinguish. We're looking into better ways to identify buffs and we plan on making improvements as soon as possible. Cool. Yeah. Uh, better descendants and weapon balancing. So far, we focus on reworking specific descendants, which they have, uh, i.e., Freyna. Well, week one, um, Freyna, uh, she was okay, but now with the rework, she's amazing. So we are re reworking specific descendants and weapons in each patch, which they have been. For Season 2, which is in December, we plan on over, overall rebalance to allow... Uh, we are planning an overall rebalance. Whoa. To allow players to choose from a border range of weapons and descendants. Very cool. Hey, Sanchez. You're not late. We're just I'm reading through. There's a lot to go through. So, uh, and just remember, they will be on my YouTube channel. So if you miss something, definitely check that out there. Uh, the lower reward drop rates feel more difficult than they should. Please improve farming difficulty. Okay, this one. We'll see what their response is. To address the drop rate concerns in Season 2, we're introducing the target reward system. With certain items have a 20% drop rate, some players might obtain the items on their first try while others may not get even after 10 attempts. Our analyst of several wide logs shows that overall drop rates aligned with intended 20, but individual players' experience do not cover to this 20, leading to variability. The target reward system aims to address this by allowing players to select a mission and earn guaranteed rewards after a set number of attempts. Ah! Additionally, we plan to offer enhanced shape stabilizers as a limited type of event reward which increases the chance of obtaining rare items with opening and more frequent materials. We're committed to providing a balanced farming experience that feels fair to all players. Whoa. Okay. Give me a second here. I'm going to screenshot that. Oh, this is pretty cool. I like that a lot. All right, that is pretty cool. So this will be in December. So this uh, we have another month to wait for this, but that's pretty cool. Uh, content, story, player suggestions. The overall story feels sim uh, short or incomplete, and there's a desire for more expansions on the backstories of key characters. The story seems to progress to a certain point and then feels like it stalls. So there's a desire for main story to continue consistently. We plan on expanding the main story with each season, and we're increasing our team's size. Again, they mentioned that they're increasing their size, which is really cool, to deliver more story content. Our goal is to provide a richer storytelling experience, not for the main plot, but for the stories of the descendants. So, yeah. They did that with Bunny. They did it with Freyna. And we will be getting more stories, as they said. So, yeah, it's just it's a matter of time waiting for more stuff to come in.
We like to see deeper stories explaining why characters are in their current situation, i.e. backstories. Yeah, well, again, we already discovered that buff. In season three, we focus on Glay's story. I look at that. There we go. We know now who's going to be the next backstory. It's going to be Glay within the main plot. We notice that many players resonate more with the personal drama of the sense than the overall matching storyline. So we plan to ensure the main story also captures descendants narratives. That's funny. We've noticed that many players resonate more with the personal drama of the descendants than the overall storyline. That is very funny. But it shows that um, devs have a good way of narrating the stories of the descendants. So people are invested. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, some players want a system where story changes based on their choices, leading to difficult outcomes. We do not believe offering choices and multiple ending aligned with the direction of First Ascendant. I would agree with that. Yes. As developers, we respect games with great multiple endings and would love to attempt it ourselves, but think it's crucial for the First Ascendant to focus on what makes it unique. 100%. Yeah, I, I've, I get where they're, whoever wrote this or multiple people of that, I get it. But I also agree with the devs on this as well. Um, multiple endings it does not align with the first descent and what the first descent is about. It's basically a single narrative and you're part of this, like a stream. And it's going, it's basically has a set border. It's going, it's not going to deviate anywhere. And you're just here for the ride. That's basically it. So yes, I would agree with that statement. And maybe if... The devs of First Ascendant are very successful in their you know, the money they use. If they create like an offshoot or maybe um, another game by these developers that has multiple, you know, then people can play that game, have multiple choices. So again, we'll see. But yes, I agree with the developers on that side of things. Uh, characters, player suggestions. We would like to see new players and abilities added. This current roster lacks diversity. We are exploring ways to introduce new Characters. As a result, we will be introducing two new descendants, one male, one female, in season two. So there you go. So one male, one female, okay, two descendants, season two. New ultimate descendants will be added, which we already know will continue efforts to bring more diverse and innovative characters. So there we go. If you're wondering on that, we will have two new descendants in season two. All this information is great. Adding characters that enable more diverse combat styles, especially characters specializing in ranged attacks, um, support abilities, and co-op play. We hope to see more unique characters with complex skill mechanics or specialized combat styles. Uh, we're working on adding more characters with diverse abilities to offer a broader game experience. However, we believe that this requires more varied content. Currently, content is divided into two types. Intercept battles, which defeats large bosses, and exterminations, which focus on defeating many monsters. As a result, characters' optimization for these two content types are highlighted. We think it's necessary to divert the types of content to allow a wider range of character choices. At this time, we're carefully testing new content to avoid creation on environments when new characters feel, uh, feel required as a choice of this content. As soon as the new content is ready, we'll seek players' feedback through focus group test in dev notes. Okay. Very cool. Uh, combat. Uh, current dungeons are repetitive and lack new challenges and enemy types. Well, yes, but at the same time, it's a looter shooter. So if you put any looter shooter like Division, Destiny, you're playing the same thing over and over again. So I see that, but at the same time, it's like you're playing a looter shooter. You're going to have repetitiveness. We need dungeons that are more challenging and require strategic thinking as there's currently lack of content to challenge core players. Uh, sure, but the, here's the thing, though. I don't think this person knows who the core player is. I think the core player is a more of a casual type player base than actual hardcore, like speedrunners. Like, sure, there's some content creators that are like, um, like me who just be made, they basically does everything. But at least from what I've seen with my viewers, uh is less competitive. So, um, hmm, not sure about that one. <laughs> the dungeons in season two will feature new types of monsters, 
We also recognize the need for some challenging in-game content. We are preparing a range of in-game experiences for Season 2. So, Season 2 sounds like it's going to be dropping some fun little nuggets for us. This is cool. This includes adding higher difficulty special operations. Oh, okay. And intercept battles, as well as content that gradually increases in difficulty to challenge the toughest stages. So, as we progress through, it increases difficulty. We hope to continue to expand the range of in game experiences. Wow. Okay. Uh, we need larger monsters. Currently, there's only small, normal, medium monsters. We like to see vulgus mobs with weak points that can be targeted. Okay. We take the idea of large vulgus mobs that have weak points into consideration and discuss them with relevant departments. We recognize the perception of a lack of larger monsters in mission and dungeon areas and also mindful of level design constraints. To add this, we plan to create new fields. A. We address this. We plan to create new fields that improve a field of combat experience with a mix of large enemies. You were actually talking about this yesterday about new areas. Is this a little hint to a new location? Ooh. Maybe. Uh, the boss's attacks patterns and combat styles are somewhat monotonous. We hope to see void intercept battles more complex in patterns. I mean, Deathstalker is a step in that type of direction. Uh, we're striving to balance additional complexity to patterns to increase difficulties while ensuring the remaining intuitive for players. We believe the Deathstalker update aligned well with this goal. Yes, I just said that. <laughs> Going forward, we continue updating intercept battles by addressing new patterns, ensuring they have both intuitive and strategically fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny that I mentioned that, and then they just said that almost word for word. That's funny. Uh, we like to see a stronger emphasis on the importance of co-op play in dungeons. We understand that there is mixed feelings about the emphasis on co-op play. Dungeons in the First Ascent are designed to be played solo, with the option for smoother and faster progression in a group. We intend to maintain the approach while enhancing co-op synergy, which we we'll believe will be support players' abilities and content difficulty. Currently, the lower difficulty of content make the need for co-op less apparent, but as we introduce more challenging in-game content, we anticipate that the demand for co-op play will grow naturally. Okay, I'll take that. Improve the structure of amorphous, uh, oh, amorphous outpost farming methods. Okay. We agree that the farming and open methods of amorphous material is um, outposts, fragments, fusion reactors needs improvement. Our team has explored various ways to enhance outposts, such as implementing systems where players can reward after a minute of continuous combat. However, we're approaching this carefully as it may put Sharon players who have less monster killing power at a disadvantage. We recognize the current outpost route is less engaging compared to the infiltration route. We're firmly committed to making improvements We'll thoroughly review all options to ensure positive changes for everyone. See here, this all goes back to what we were talking about um, when there someone mentioned in chat about is there a bunny nerf? The, see, this is what I like about the devs is that they recognize that there's a player base that use Sharon's and that Sharon has a niche and they'll try their best to not nerf her to the ground and make her irrelevant because there's still players who use Sharon and love her. So this again just shows that the devs have put a lot of consideration into this and don't want to put her into like a bad position where she's just useless. So that is pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yo, I read this morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sounds is pretty good so far. Uh, removed on um, reasonable penalties for content, weapon mo modules, in inversions, etc. We received considerable feedback regarding penalties on invasions, inversion, reinforcement, and similar areas. Currently, we are not cons um, considering penalties when designing new content. Instead, we are aimed to provide attribute bonuses to, to encourage a wider variety of character use. Moving forward, we plan on balancing content to avoid imposing penalties on participation. We'll also review the penalties at ultimate weapons to make them usable without penalties, even at base level, ensuing a more enjoyable experience. We plan to retain the plus minus effect of modules as it offers an optimum option to maximize positive effects when, when configuring characters or builds when certain areas that are not needed. Alongside the positive and negative effects, we also introduce the positive positive effect in modules, providing players with even more customization options. Ooh. Nice, very cool. What are the penalties? Uh, so just take 
for instance, the, let's say, tech amplification. So it amplifies your base skill power, but also gives you a negative crit chance or crit hit modifier. But that's the positive and negative what they were talking about. But in the future, they are talking about having positive and positive. So it might be positive skill power up and positive skill crit hits. So yeah. Yeah, so that's what they're talking about, the positive and negative effects right here. But that will be down the road, which is, sounds pretty cool. Um, again, I'm just getting that uh, season one was cool, but season two is definitely going to be a, ooh, is going to be a very fun one. Please consider accessibility options for visually and hearing impaired players when developing content. Based on this and feedback, we've enhanced cryptic vault navigation by adding visual effects through recognizing accessibility options are still lacking. Yes, they're starting in the right direction. Moving forward, we are committed to gradually introducing more accessibility features to make the first descent enjoyable for a wider range of players. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the events that have been held or are currently ongoing aren't very engaging, and rewards aren't sufficient for encouraging engagement. Current events are repetitive. We like to see more uh, creative and more content, such as seasonal special events. Uh, we're running a web events to offer a vi wider variety of event events and plan to enhance accessibility by completing them in game feature within. We aim to provide various in game events, such as attendance checks. In the event stores so players can enjoy activities with the game itself. During periods without major updates, we continue to support gameplay through events, establishing them as a key content feature. So it sounds like they are addressing it, but they're not going to deviate too much from what they are having. But again, I don't blame them because they're more focused on getting us more content in the game versus actually having events. So the events from what I'm seeing are sort of like bonus, which helps us in a little bit, but that's not the main focus of the dev team. That's what the gist I'm feeling with this response. Personally, I don't have an issue with it. I'm glad that they're giving us stuff, but uh, yeah, apparently some people are not liking, um, wanting more of this, so. Okay. Oh, there's some ads. There's ads on TikTok? That's weird. Oh, okay. Aim down straight. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, we like to see special rewards. <laughs> I was like, what? I was, I was a little bit concerned there. <laughs> uh, we like to see special rewards for characters' skins. We all are, we are, all, uh, can't speak. We are always careful consideration every structure and reward. As previously mentioned, we're planning to introduce new event features along with the growth items, materials, and currency rewards. We're exploring other options, including character skins to enhance motivation and satisfaction. Ideally, these skins will align with the season theme, and we're looking into ways of players to earn them simply through event participation and gameplay. There we go. Cool. I know there was a few people who was like, I want some more skins. There you go. And they're looking into making it a little bit more accessible and just a little bit more fun to get. Uh, so, equipment, firearms, uh, there's a lack of incentive to obtain ultimate weapons. Huh? And they currently lack uniqueness, which I like to see more polished and unique weapon. There's a lack of incentive to obtain un ultimate weapons? I mean, ultimate weapons are the goal. Huh, weird. We would like new firearms to diversify options and a rework to make the existing firearms feel more distinct. We plan on rebalancing ultimate weapons in season two. Again, I feel season two is like it's is going going off the rails to give players a broader choice based on their preferences. Initially, we continue to add ultimate weapons with interesting stats and effects to make them more worthwhile to collect. Uh, like what you're looting for? Ah, could be, could be. Uh, yeah. I mean, they did a rework to um was. Uh, Kingsguard Lance. So that so there again. It's just it's just time that they the devs need to make it, and they're working on. Yeah, uh, would like to add support for zooming in out with firearms. To add support for zooming in and out with fire. Huh? We discussed introducing weapons with ADS aim down sight system to enhance the firearms experience. 
since the first person is optimized for fast-paced running gun combat with less need for precision shoot mechanics. This idea is currently on hold. We believe that it's more important to focus on creating engagement firearm effects and iconic dream weapon rather than precision controls. We've lowered the priority at this point on our agenda. Hmm. So... I mean, like, if you're running a sniper, you do have aim down sign. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not a gun user. So I don't really see really need for it. But for those who are gun, I, I can see why they're asking for it. But it's currently on hold. <laughs> so that might piss a few people off, but uh, oh well. We would like to add a feature to adjust the types and numbers of secondary options on reactors. Adjust the type and number secondary. Uh, yeah, currently we do not support readjustments since reactors only have two options. But we have received a lot of feedback about this. We consider increasing the reactor options to four or raising the cost of readjustments with further details to be shared in future dev notes. Like the third person aiming? Yeah. But we'll see. They, it's currently on hold, but who knows? Um, we probably won't see any talks about this in season two. Sounds like, but who knows? In season three, uh, they might have an address to that. But this one here is interesting. We see a lot of feedback on this. We're considering increasing the reactor options to four. Is have two stats, substats. So you have four substats. That would be crazy to farm, or raising the cost of readjustments, which further details to be shared in in the future dev note. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what this future dev notes is going to be but four substats that would be a little bit crazy as uh, i bet some of them will be negative stats though but yeah again we will have to see because right now it's tough trying to get two gold substats yeah we we'll, we'll have to see what they do but apparently they're looking into it and we'll have a dev note which we'll cover on this channel we would like to add crafting to rare reactors for a better uh, build variety rare reactors. Okay, the reactor implement system is the 1.6 update has been made weapon optimization easier. We've noticed the feedback about the consumable materials and cost for the implement. We will review the data and, if necessary, increase the way to earn more materials. Our direction of the reactor improvements include optimization of the rotation system to simplify farming for ultimate reactors and create an environment for more interesting builds by introducing new reactor tiers. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people saying that the the cost for the implement is pretty high, so we will probably see either um, for crafting it'll be a little bit less. And when you go to Aeneas, uh, the cost will be either brought down, or there's going to be a way that you can in a world you might be able to um, get materials to get that. So we will see. <sighs> We will see about this. Uh, so modules. Add a way to obtain modules, i.e. shot focus and zero exclusive modules. Drop source of modules have been diversified on 1.6. Right. Easy answer. <laughs> Increase the performance of dedicated transcendent mods. We review the performance and underutilized transcendent mods. Adjust them to allow more variety in their usage. Yeah. So, okay. Apparently, there's going to be a... Uh, buff to some of the transcendent mods we will have to see in the future dev note or hotfix. Add a feature to delete modules from the inventory. Ooh. Currently, we have improved at the 1.6 update, so transcendent module drops are sent to lost and found. If you have 1, 000, um, 1,500 modules, after this patch, we'll further assess whether the inventory deletion function is necessary. Oh, okay. Okay, so they are considering it. I know that was one thing. I think it was week one, actually. Uh, people were saying, hey, is there a way that we can delete stuff from our inventory? So we will have to see about that one. Add an auto combine feature and modules. We understand the need for this feature and are currently preparing improvements. We plan to include as hotfix as soon as possible. Heck yeah. Let's go. Auto combine feature coming down, down the pipeline. Let's go. Uh, add functions to the search functions for modules and I, uh, inventory, initial search space, ignoring blah, blah, blah. Add a dismantling feature with and conditions. We believe in more quality of life improvements. Before, if you want to know what QOL is, is quality of life improvements like these are better. 
Our um, dedicated live team is collecting and organizing player feedback to make continuous improvements. Yep, again, just wait, wait out, wait for some more, but they are listening and they are working in progress on that. So just be ready for that. Uh, currently, customization options for characters are limited. Yes, 100%. We'd like to see more options for appearance elements. We hope to have a wider selection of hairstyles, such as long hair, unique styles. Ooh, long hair. That'll be cool. Uh, as well as more options to overall custom customization. We note that players have a strong desire for customization. Our um, internal data shows particularly high demand for appearance options like hairstyles, so we decided to expand our art team capacity to produce more of them. We also continue to review and steadily increase a wider range of custom options. So, in case you're wondering, there's your answer. Apparently, they have. Uh, it, well, uh, I'm not a dev, but they have to go through an art team and all that. And so, it sounds like it's it's a like a x amount of employees, and so they need to add more art team to their team to be able to do that. So, okay, cool. But that answers that question. So yes, we will have some customization. It's just there's a limit to what their um, art team can do at the current time. That's why it's that not much. So okay, cool. I'll I'll take that answer. Allow us to use dies on the default character appearances. All right, let's see what their answer to this is. Uh, you you've we've listened to your request and with the start of season two both descendants and ultimate descendant default appearances will be dialable there we go look at that chat season two as i said i feel season two is going to be like a big banger of stuff it sounds like it so the sin base descendant and ultimate descendants default appearances will be dialable we will apologize for the delay in implementing this high requested feature additionally as noted in previous update notes Dedicated spawns and back attachments will become shared items in season two. Wow. There we go, chat. There we go. So we have to wait a month for this, but it is coming. Cool. I'm going to take a screenshot of that as well. Sweet, sweet. There we go. So we just have to wait a month. We can do it. Uh, let's see. Limited selection of skins make it hard to customize as desired, releasing more skins for both casual and unique themes. That's right. Our data shows that skins are a wide variety of themes that are very popular. In response, we're expecting our team, expanding our team to create skins with more themes. Again, that's the art team. We're expanding our team, which is the art team, to create skins for more themes and greater qualities. We'll appreciate your patience as we work through this. Again, be patient, guys. Be patient. It'll come. It just, they need to expand their art team, which they mentioned above. So it'll come. Uh, customization system isn't very user friendly, and the process of changing character appearances is complicated. Uh, I personally don't think that's an issue, but okay. Uh, we anticipate more usability improvement requests once the previous mentioned plans are implemented, which is above, and we'll continue to work on these improvements. Cool. Yeah, just wait. Yeah, that guy's tripping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a twisted uh, worship outfit in the customization menu. We have actually taken the suggestion on board implement in the update, which is 1.6. We've added the redesigned body skin to exist in pro We already said that. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. What do they mean by this one? Uh, the customization is in. Uh, what do you mean? The twisted worship outfit one? Which were you confused about? Okay, so um, apparently, yeah. Uh, uh, so there's um, the the only difference I saw when I went into the shop was there's um, like the original one had like a two um, pieces of cloth covering, and then uh, there's another one that has not basically. So. Uh, if you take a look into your preview in the shop, you can see there are two v versions of it. We've actually taken the suggestion on board and implemented it in the 1.6. update. we've added a redesigned body skin to, to exit the product, and new um, purchases will receive both the original and the updated skins. The revised version will also be sent via mail to purchase more details will provide separately. Yeah. Yeah, again, um, 
you can't you can't uh make everyone happy but you can see they're trying which is good so yeah again i when i read the hotfix yesterday i was like huh <laughs> but again it's people being people uh making character skins and battle passing skins for the firearms that play frequent use are more appealing uh, we just uh, received a lot of feedback about the battle pass during the presentation uh, preseason in season one. In season two, we plan looking adding the sin scans and popular firearm scans. There you go. As I said, just more and more is just like wait until season two. We're going to have some really cool stuff down the pipeline. Uh, we want to buy skins without um, bundle packages if it feels a little excessive. The price of skins, enhancement, materials, etc. are too high. We've listened to your feedback, and the team and business units have agreed to sell all cosmetic items, skins, spawns, back to that, that separately. This policy will go into effect at the start of season two. Interesting. Uh, so the team and the business units have agreed to sell all cosmetic items separately. Interesting choice. Okay. Uh, this policy will go into effect at the start of season two. We'll also review enhanced uh, enhance materials to make them efficient, more purchasing. Okay. Oh. Huh. Yeah. So there you go. Now my thing, my wondering is, will they still have the bundle? But then, can you just purchase them individually? I wonder if that's what the route is. So you have the option for the bundle for people who want to do it. Um, probably for a discount, but if you bought them separately, you can you spend a little bit more money. I would think that's how the route they would go with that. Are there any plans to sell retired skins again, or are they truly off the market? Many players have requested the sales of retired skins. While we are carefully considering changes to store displays for regular sales, we decided in condition with the dev team that our business to change our policy for upcoming skins be available for regular sales. Except for certain seasonal event skins for, for former skins. We plan to add previously retired descendant, ultimate descendant skins as individual items for the skins are carefully reviewing our options. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let me reread this again. So retired skin. So like the evolution bunny skin is no longer available right now. So... Um, so we've decided in co coordination with the dev team and our business team to change our policies for upcoming skins to be available for regular sale, except for certain seasonal event skins, which I'm going to assume is the holiday and uh, the Halloween skins. So if you don't buy them, they will probably be gone until next year. Uh, um, for form, um, uh, former skins, we plan on adding previously retired ultimate descendant skins as individual items. So maybe evolution skins are sort of not, but for the old ones, like the bundles currently, I think those are, might be re-implemented. We'll have to see it with a hotfix or dev note on this. So it sounds like they got an idea, but they need to sort of fully flesh it out um, to, for these skins. Like, so good question, but it seems like the devs are sort of like they got a, idea of where they want to go but they need to just finalize it uh miscellaneous add the ability to use surplus materials to craft amorphic materials crafting morphic material interesting we're continuously adding new systems to make us uh, use a surplus material similar to how we have eta-0 providing an opportunity to exchange surplus blueprints for other items our plan is to support utilizing surplus materials currency and other sources in innovative ways so sounds like that's their nice way of saying no. <laughs> it sounds like that's a no, that's not happening. <laughs> but I, I like how they did it. <laughs> it's like, no, we're not crafting morphic material, but check out these other things right here. <laughs> Uh, server optimization and lag. We're experiencing a lot of stuttering lag, especially in co-op play. Yes, I've heard that quite a few times from people. We are aware of the optimization issues in a recent update 400 dungeons. As we plan on keeping development content with many monsters, we're working additional optimization for smoother experience than which will be placed in season two. Again, another season two is going to be the big thing. It's going to be good. I'm, that sounded like I was being sarcastic, but no, it's, 
I feel season two is going to be amazing. Uh, trading system. Ah, here we go. <laughs> All right, let's see what their answer is. The trading system. Players can um, freely trade items with each other. Okay, let's see what we have here. To be honest, we're taking a conservative approach of the trading system as our current priorities, life service, stability, improving content satisfaction. We do not think this is the right time to induce it just yet, but we'll continue to evaluate as a feasible. Oh, okay. All right. So as a current time, I think it's the right time to induce it yet, but we will continue to evaluate as a feasible. So it's still on the board as a possibility, but currently, no. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. In case you were wondering, I'll take a, I'll go ahead and take a screenshot of this as well. So if anyone comes into my chat and all that, I'll just go. It's on the table, but not right now. <laughs> uh, so there you go. That answers that question. Receipts, exactly, exactly, yeah. Add a system on space to display own uh, descendant-like... Oh, hey, I like this idea. Add a system or space to display your own descendants-like figurines. We think this is a great idea, A, eh? and similar suggestions have come out in, um, internally. Though we do not yet have a specific plan, however, this is under consideration as a medium to long-term project. A, eh? we might have our own little space down the road chat. That would be so cool. Oh man, that would be so cool. So, um, I'm, I'm not sure if you played Warframe, but um, in Warframe, you have your own little ship that you can then customize. Your, so it's your own little personal space and all that. And so you can put like little dongles and things that you collected and all that. That's what they were talking about. So have a, a system or space to display descendants uh, or like little things like your own little customized area in the world. Yeah. So that has been brought up internally, which is pretty cool. So even the devs themselves were like, Hey, this might be a cool idea. So we don't have any specific plans. However, it's under consideration medium to long-term. So medium, I would medium to long-term project. I would say it's not going to be implemented or um, it's not even going to, don't worry about getting mentioned in season two, but maybe season three or four might have this right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like an Albion space. Yeah. So my, my prediction would be, we would like, this was mentioned, but in season three, we'll have some more information on this. They might surprise us with the season two, but I personally feel that their season two is more focus on other things but yeah season three i feel that will have some something on this and then forward so uh player suggestion add a photo mode screenshot only screen we would love to add this feature internally as well but it's difficult to say when it might be feasible we'll review this further and make sure to keep you updated uh, okay so photo mode might be in the works pretty cool pretty cool We'll go ahead and screenshot that. I know there are a few of my friends that are f people who used uh, photo mode. So we'll go ahead and say that. Uh, let's see here. We're interested to hear your thoughts on the dev team's responses. For any questions we couldn't answer today, we plan to open a new QA channel on our official Discord next week. Okay, so if you want more, if you want to submit any more questions, chat, who is reading next week. Now, uh, be looking on the Discord's um, Ferguson's main Discord channel. There'll be a Q and A section there, where the develop team will respond directly. We'll appreciate you could join us there and share your questions and feedback. The team is currently hard at work on season two, scheduled for release on December fifth. So, uh, yeah. So again, a month away is the season two. Pretty cool. So that is a deadline. There you go. Put on mark on your calendars. Uh, drawing our firm experience with season one update, we want to ensure we gather ample player feedback to refine content ahead of new updates. As part of this plan, 
we conducted a focus group tests specifically for the new season two content. Hey, so beta testers. That's going to be cool. So that's cool that they have um, a team that's going to be focused on that just to make sure everything is good. We'll be sharing details on Discord, inviting, oh, inviting players to preview the season two content and provide feedback. Hello? Really? They're going to be inviting players to preview the season two content? Oh, that's huge. Well, some issues may be resolved immediately. We committed to gather early feedback and incorporate as much as possible to the shape. The first is in the end game that truly really reflects your ideas. We'll be back in November with more details about season two, and we'll keep you posted on our progress moving forward. As always, we'll continue to listen to your valuable feedback and do our best to improve your gaming experience. We're looking forward to continued support and implement. Thank you. Wow. So they are going to get community feedback from for season two. That's pretty cool. Very nice. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, Baron?